Hey YouTube. It's Jamie smoking in my car. Smoking my Peterson Aaron. Uh, I don't know what shape it is. There's like letters and numbers for all the shapes, right? Like uh, 68 Saw Gunner was just like, you inspired me to get a Peterson B10. And I had to look up what a B10 was, but apparently the B10 is that uh, bent calabash shape. I the, I you, I have one. My uh, I was calling it my Peterson Aaron calabash, which I guess is a way to put that, but you could just call it by the shape, which is a B10. I don't know what you call this. Uh, this might be a six, something six, because it's a Peterson Aaron six. I just know it as a straight billiard. But, uh, mm, I'm smoking uh, something, a blend called Crooner that David, Central California Piper, sent to me. It's called Crooner, this blend. Um, it was a sample. And I have no idea what's in it. I, I'm going to take a guess, though. I'm thinking it's burly. I detect no topping. Um, burly, maybe. There's something with some sweetness in there. Maybe an oriental. Burly. Uh, Virginia. Virginia and Oriental. I'm going to say Burley, Virginia, Oriental. And one, and for Virginias, I'm going to say uh, Red Virginias. I could be totally wrong. I don't have the most developed palate. But this tastes kind of like um, a non-aromatic sort of codger blend. Like, I, there is a spiciness, though, too. So I don't know if there's perique in this. I am getting a spiciness on the retrohale. A peppery, like a peppercorn sort of spiciness. Anyway, it's called Crooner. I don't even know who makes it. The sample that I got just says Crooner. And I I think I've heard about that blend before. It's very good. So, um, <clears throat> Jonathan, Blake1827, uh, commented on my, either my last video or the one before that. He said, uh, he said, I know you lived a lot of places, just, you know, moved around the country quite a bit. Uh, he said, I'd like to hear, uh, your impressions of some of these places. Like, what do you think of these various uh, cities or towns? Maybe how do they compare? And I'm not one to turn down a request. So, uh, I guess, here, let me just do the list real quick. This is kind of the order of how we moved around. First, me, by my, me with my family, me by myself, and then me and my wife. Uh, born in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Stayed in that area, Fairfield County, Connecticut, for 19 years, with a brief segue for about six months in Florida when I was a, a baby. Like under two years old. Like one to two years old, maybe. Uh, Anyway, at 19, I left uh, Connecticut to Arizona. I came out here just by myself. Um, I flew out here. I worked at a boarding house. I got a job at a car wash. About five years later, four or five years later, I moved to Houston, Texas. Stayed there nine months. I, I really didn't fit well in Texas. I didn't like it. Houston, like big... 
you know, bugs and flying roaches that are this big and raccoons all over our street. And this is in like mid city, what they call inner loop Houston. It wasn't a good fit for me. Uh, after that, I went to Huntington Beach, California, and then Costa Mesa, California, which are both in Orange County. And then, uh, and then I went back to Phoenix for a few years. Then I went up to Las Vegas uh, for about four years. I met my wife there. Then after that, we went to Los Angeles for a year or two. Then we went, then she got accepted in graduate school in Minneapolis. So we lived in Minneapolis for four years. And then, uh, then back to Connecticut, Fairfield County, Connecticut, which is basically, Fairfield County is sort of a suburb of New York City. It's like right outside of New York City, in, in just over the Connecticut line. Um, and then we went to Los Angeles again, but this time we lived on the other side of town. We lived on, uh, we lived in Highland Park, which is like Northeast LA, near Eagle, near Eagle Rock, in between like downtown and Pasadena, in that sort of, off the 110 there. Uh, then after LA, we came back here to Phoenix, and that was uh, 2014, so I've been here since 2014. So that's basically the places uh, I slash we lived. And then maybe uh, maybe over the course of a couple of videos, uh, I could get it more into the particulars of each of those places. Some things that stand out was Minneapolis was really cool. We lived in Northeast Minneapolis, what they call Northeast. Northeast Minneapolis. Right northeast of downtown on the Mississippi River. It was cool. They had a great arts community, really developed arts community. In fact, I had, I've always played music my whole life. When I was there, I was playing a lot of jazz and free jazz. So free jazz is slightly different because it's completely improvised. There's no tunes. It's just complete, using sort of jazz instrumentation and sensibilities, but it's completely freely improvised. So you're not like playing standards or anything. Pretty challenging music to listen to, actually. A lot of people hate it. They think it sounds like noise. And much of it does. Because much of it is. The weird thing about free jazz is... Uh, it's sort of a uh, a bastion of charlatanism, I think. When you get people who don't know how to play, who don't know how to play inside jazz, or you know standards, and you know playing on chord changes and playing tunes and melodies and soloing over changes, um, they sometimes skip right to free jazz, just because they know there's less rules and boundaries and less concern for playing on chord changes and that's bad music I don't like that kind of free jazz I like free jazz done by people who know how to play inside jazz because like Hemingway said about writing he said you have to know the rules in order to break them properly and I think that's the case in the arts as well like uh Jackson Pollock, for example. He's the splatter guy who you've seen in the mid-20th century. Uh, just paint splatters and things. You look at that and you might, you might think to yourself, any five-year-old can do that. But that's not the case. He comes from, um, you know, he was trained in the arts. He knew how to paint. 
but uh, but then he got into this freer mode you know he got into this freer approach these action paintings he called them and it's the same with the music uh, unless somebody knows the rules how, how do they know to break them properly same thing with literature same thing with filmmaking same thing with quiz, like the culinary arts before you can get creative and express yourself you have to know the sort of lexicon and the parameters and the, the kind of nuts and bolts theoretical concepts the state of the art you have to know the state of the art to push the boundaries of the art, right? Talk to you later.